Hello everyone, my name is Mark Valdez and today I'm speaking on Weaponizing Falling Down, Breaking Bad and Better Call Saul Filming Location and Set Semiotics. Albuquerque is full of picturesque buildings, most of which Vince Gilligan and company completely ignore. So, what are the criteria for a good filming location and can we anticipate what buildings they might like? Breaking Bad is a cautionary tale about Chicago's vast impact on America. Why Chicago? The legacy of modernity in American capitalism is harshest there and most in need of dramatization. An influential history that may inform Breaking Bad is Marco de Ramos' The Pig in the Skyscraper. Chicago's architectural legacy is crucial and Albuquerque is a good showcase of Chicago architecture because the railroad and the freeway brought quite a bit of Chicago architecture straight to the Duke City. The 1993 film Falling Down is the template for Breaking Bad. Falling Down stars Michael Douglas as aerospace engineer Bill Foster, the prototype of Walter White as he takes a disastrous walk across central Los Angeles. Falling Down anticipates many Breaking Bad themes, including economic insecurity, deranged masculinity, Latino hoodlums, and an obsession with family. Falling Down anticipates many Breaking Bad visual and soundscape elements, such as faded Art Deco architecture, very similar music, and even a pesky fly. What Vince Gilligan and Peter Gould did was to take this basic template and add in their own interests to, to turbocharge it uh, and to weaponize Falling Down for maximum impact as Breaking Bad. Chicago's legacy is on display at Whammy Burger, the prototype of Los Pollos Hermanos. At issue is the slogan, the customer is always right. That slogan comes from Chicago, and even though the Whammy Burger scenes don't mention Chicago once, they are all about Chicago's legacy. The idea that only a nobody walks across LA was popularized a decade prior by the new wave band Missing Persons. Missing Persons was fostered in the environment of Frank Zappa's utility muffin research kitchen, and it suggests that Vince Gilligan is also working within the tradition of Frank Zappa. And of course, in 2016, Lady Gaga bought Utility Muffin, and the satirical tradition continues with her. In Breaking Bad, Vince Gilligan adds the uh, story of the, the four, five apparitions of Our Lady of Guadalupe. According to tradition, four of the apparitions are to the peasant Juan Diego, played by Jesse Pinkman, and one to his uncle Juan Bernardino, played by Walter White. In the episode Breakage, as Jesse approaches the apartment that he will rent from uh, Jane. In Jane's doorway, we, we, we see a vision of the Madonna. In the episode Phoenix, when Jesse frets about the missing meth, we see a vision of the Madonna on his t-shirt. Those are apparitions one and two. In the episode Over, when Jane injects Jesse, presumably with heroin, she tells him, I'll meet you there, which is exactly what the Madonna tells the peasant Juan Diego about their meeting the next day at the Hill of Tepeyac in Mexico City. The fourth apparition comes in the episode Phoenix, when the peasant Juan Diego returns from the Hill of Tepeyac wearing his telma, his cloak, and bearing the miraculous uh, Castilian roses in December. In 
Vince Gilligan's twisted retelling, it's Jane who wears the tilma and bears the roses on the, her t-shirt. The fifth apparition comes much later, towards the end of season three. Uh, in the episode Half Measures, Walt and Flynn are watching Jeopardy on TV. The subject is Ego, Walt Whitman's Song of Myself, I Sound My Barbaric Yop. And at that moment, uh, a stuffed animal appears next to Walt. Possibly a pig. I'm, I'm thinking it's probably a, a, a cow, which is a Marian symbol. The stylized mural on Jane's wall is a, sty is a uh, stylized Lady of Guadalupe mural. In the image in Mexico City on the left, we see the Madonna framed by the tilma bearing a, a blue mantle with stars and standing atop a darkened crescent moon which symbolizes the fallen Aztec Empire. In Jane's mural, we see Jane riding the Milky Way, but with her feet also above a darkened crescent moon. There's a strong didactic impulse in these television series, uh, a recapitulation of 19th and 20th century daylighting innovations. Daylighting is the practice of improving windows so that the interiors of even large buildings can be illuminated by sunlight. Uh, this was important in Chicago because uh, the very first skyscrapers were, were created there. And as buildings became larger and larger, it became more and more urgent that, that, that windows be improved so that the light could get into, the, into their centers. And then once electrical lighting technology improved, these same b large buildings became beacons and lanterns in the night. Uh, in fact, uh, the the tops of the um, the tall buildings here on the on the Chicago skyline, they're brilliantly lit, and in architectural lingo, they are known as uh, lanterns. The windows at issue are glass block windows, Luxfer prismatic tile windows, plate glass, skylights, and vault or pavement glass. Vault glass is a, a window in the sidewalk so that basements can be illuminated by sunlight. And Chicago had an outsized role in all of these innovations. Glass block windows symbolize Chicago and uh, they were first introduced on a mass scale to the American public at Chicago's Century of Progress exhibition in 1933, spreading from there like wildfire all around the world. Uh, they start optimistically enough, but in Breaking Bad and Better Call Saul, Chicago's progress and what it represents is, is all a very negative thing. It's all a very, but no good, very bad thing. Luxfer prismatic tile windows are used when fraud or deceit is at issue. And we see them several times in these television series. Plate glass is used heavily in Better Call Saul. Now, plate glass is a European innovation, but the patron saint of plate glass, uh, Ludwig Mies van der Rohe, was based in Chicago. There's nothing in the way of vault lights present anymore, I believe, in the city of Albuquerque. Uh, so what the um, uh, Better Call Saul team did was to take a typical vault light pattern a Pythagorean triple array of circles and to stand it up on its side and use it as a uh, regular window, which we see in the Chicago bar scenes with Marco and Jimmy. And skylights, of course, present, for example, at Coronado Center. Um, there are also certain missing elements. Fresnel glass was an important 19th century 
innovation. We don't see it in the television series, um, most likely because uh, Fresnel glass was used mostly in maritime environments, and Albuquerque is not a maritime city. It, it may be that it will be used at some point in the future. Uh, there's also no Frank Lloyd Wright, and that's mostly a historic accident. Uh, Frank Lloyd Wright never designed any buildings in Albuquerque. If Breaking Bad had been hosted in a different city, for example, Phoenix, things might have been quite a bit different. Clear story windows are a traditional architectural use. Um, they are used to indicate healing. Here in the Schwartzman Slaughterhouse, which houses the Mexican mass unit, we have clear story windows. The message here is that Gus is healing. At the Triangle Grocery in Cedar Crest, where Chuck shops, we see clear story windows. The message here is that Chuck is healing. It, inter interestingly, um, uh, Cottonwood Mall, where Gene is found at his Cinnabon restaurant, um, it also has clear story windows. And I believe the message there is that Gene is healing. Gentle arches indicate a woman in her sphere of authority. Uh, we have, for example, the Walter White, or the, the, the White Bedroom headboard and its gentle arch where Schuyler is queen. Uh, we have the Crossroads Motel with its two gentle arches on its office where you can find Wendy. Now, um, uh, they couldn't use just any motel here in Albuquerque. They had to find one which had art, uh, gentle arches on it for Wendy. The first time we see Betsy Kettleman is at Loyola's Cafe. Uh, underneath this sculpture of crazy crescent arches. And the water buffalo's girlfriend is so powerful in her sphere of authority that she gets two gentle arches. Round arches indicate natural order, the way that things should be. In the episode Mabel, when the Air Force captain yells at Jimmy, um, his self-esteem is damaged and his reaction is to paint over half the rainbow. That's taking a, a round arch and converting it into a gentle arch. That's his way of lowering his position in the partnership at Wexler McGill, which elevates Kim's position to an eminence that she is not prepared to handle. In the episode Sabrosito, Gus suggests that that Mike should join his operation, and Mike indicates a willingness to consider it. At that moment, Gus hits his mark directly underneath a basketball hoop in the distance. That basketball hoop is a round arch. Uh, that basketball hoop uh, is on warehouse 508. There is a hoop on that building, but it is on the west facing wall, not the south facing wall. Uh, and so, so the, the Better Call Saul team erected this basketball hoop. And the, um, and, and the message seems to be that Mike working with Gus is the natural order of things, the way things should be. Bell shapes foreshadow danger. You have your classic bell shape, and then you have your more fluted wine glass shape, which suggests more of a poison, uh, although poison can be dangerous. Um, in the episode Half Measures, when Walt and Jesse meet to discuss Gus's use of children in the drug selling operation, we have an arcade of round arches in the background. Normally that would indicate the natural order of things, but beneath it hangs a rack of hanging wine glasses. And the message instead seems to be um, the use of children in a drug selling operation is particularly poisonous. 
Bell shapes can be found in desk lamps. Desk lamps had been rarely used in Breaking Bad until the middle of season three in the episode ICU when their use suddenly proliferates. That also happens to be the de debut episode of set dresser Michael Flowers and I suspect that this may be his doing. Um, when Kim is feeling doomed at HHM, she is shown with two dread symbols, the, the moth orchid and the desk lamp. In general, wall fixture lamps in Better, in Better Call Saul open upwards, um, but they open downwards in Breaking Bad. And even though they're very common in American society, uh, you never see in these television series a desk lamp with a double upper strut. And that may be because it's too close to Pixar's trademark. There are two traditions of Art Deco in the Southwest. There's Streamline Modern, which is what you get when you combine industrial design with Art Deco. There's also Pueblo Deco, what you get when you combine Art Deco with the Pueblo Revival style that you see, for example, at Davis and Maine. <clears throat> Pueblo Deco arches foreshadow tragedy. Um, a Pueblo Deco arch is an abstraction of a post and lintel arch. We see them, for example, at the doorways of the Albuquerque Sunport, these, these blue uh, plastic um, uh, constructions. Here, they uh, foreshadow the aviation tragedy at the end of season two of Breaking Bad. The first time that they are used is in the episode Breakage, when Walt leaves the oncology clinic. The clerk gives him a, a hope pen and he throws it away. The camera spirals upwards in order to capture the building, and it's the building itself that's uh, a Pueblo Deco arch. There are Pueblo Deco arches everywhere at Jane and Jesse's, at Gail's apartment, and uh, on Hank and Marie's back deck. When Walt ca calls the cops, uh, when Walt calls Mike to tell him that the cops are coming, we see Pueblo Deco arches on the filigree on the house in the background. And when Mike goes to get his go bag at the airport, he climbs up into the girders, not just to retrieve his keys, but also to show us the Pueblo Deco arch in the awning. The uh, metal walkway in the super lab is very unusual. In order to descend the spiral staircase, you first have to climb up to a, a platform. You can't buy metal walkways this way. No one makes them this way. They are impractical. The only reason it is done here is as a work of art in order to show us the Pueblo Deco arch of the steps leading up to the platform. And you see Pueblo Deco arches in unusual places underneath the coffee table in the white living room. The Pueblo Deco arch is abstracted a bit further into a stagger symbol. The, um, and that's the most common warning sign in these television series. Uh, we see, for example, the, the profile of a stairway when Todd lures Andrea out onto her front doorstep. Uh, also, in the background on the stairway, we see a, a, a vision of Curious George. A little bit about that in a minute. Uh, here on the right, Walt graciously leans over, uh, not just to play with Holly, but to allow us to see the staggered wall in Hank and Marie's living room. The stagger symbol is everywhere. There are glass block windows in Jimmy's nail salon office. Uh, the one, um, it, this particular one is built in the shape of a stagger. 
and and so you get a kind of combined warning symbol. Uh, interesting composition with uh, Jimmy's outspread arms and his crossed ankles with this metal lattice work in the foreground. That composition closely resembles 1954's Corpus Hypercubus by Salvador Dali. Indeed, the uh, hypercube cross reappears in the episode Chicanery when uh, Jimmy cross examines Chuck. We see in the mural in the background a, a, a traditional Spanish mission cross next to the hypercube cross with symbols of warfare suggesting the battle between tradition and modernity or um, if you're so inclined the the battle of taos in 1847 in here in northern new mexico where you really did have a, an armed collision between the forces of tradition and modernity glass block windows are very versatile they can be used for uh, shout outs homages and for telling tangential stories in the background all without interfering with the flow of the drama in the foreground. We get an example of such a use in the episode Crawl Space, where Walt is wheeled into the industrial laundry in a laundry cart. In the background, we see a uh, glass block window. Here, the show creators are honoring the legend of El Chapo Guzman, head of the Sinaloa cartel, and the most powerful drug lord that's ever lived. In 2001, El Chapo escaped Puente Grande prison in Mexico, allegedly in a laundry cart. And the Chicago connection comes because uh, the Sinaloa cartel provides um, most of the drugs distributed in the city of Chicago today. When Walt threatens with the explosive crystal um, in Tuco's office, we see two symbols in the background. We see the glass block window, but we also see a slot machine. The glass block window sig signifies Chicago. The slot machine signifies Las Vegas. The two symbols together indicate the Chicago outfit the underworld organization that largely controlled uh, gambling in the city of Las Vegas for a number of years. And it suggests that uh, Tuco himself may be an amalgam of mafia enforcer characters. Tuco has a baseball bat in the corner of his, off of his office. That suggests Tony batters a cardo. Uh, that was his favorite tool. Um, and also Tuco could uh, represent Tony the Ant Spilotro. Uh, Tony the Ant was a particularly colorful Vegas enforcer in the 70s. And um, in uh, the 1995 uh, film Casino, uh, directed by Martin Scorsese, Tony, Tony the Ant's character, Nicky Santoro, was played by Joe Pesci. Tony the Ant was a favorite of mobster Sam Giancana, who was head of the Chicago outfit in the early 60s. When Sam Giancana was under house arrest, Tony the Ant worked out a path running through people's backyards in order to visit him without being detected. And so when Howard does the same in the episode Witness, it uh, begs the question, do lawyers under duress act like the Mafia? There is a testament to modern architecture in the lobby of HHM, in the railings on the stairway leading up and also on the balcony above. The, uh, th this particular uh, cross structure is, uh, was um, was once revolutionary. It was introduced, this exact, this exact, exact cross structure 
was introduced in London's Crystal Palace in 1851. The Crystal Palace was the the forerunner of much of of modern um, streamlined modern international style architecture its modular design was was revolutionary actually uh, it was the forerunner to the great shopping malls of late 19th century Europe and also 20th century America but um, the Crystal Palace had an unfortunate tendency to uh, tawdriness, it sort of decayed with time. So things start optimistically enough in 1851, uh, hopes are high, but by the time you get to Albuquerque in 2008, uh, the Crystal Palace is the Crossroads Motel, and it's a seriously degraded and tawdry place. The Bingo Hall in Better Call Saul was filmed at Balat Abyad Shriner's temple. On the south wall is a mural of a skyline. To a Shriner, this mural's interpretation is rather simple. It is modern day Cairo. Uh, you have modern buildings, uh, suggestions of pyramids, uh, an obelisk, and a large dome with a little cupola up on top in the traditional uh, Kyrene manner. But to somebody with a more modernist inclination, uh, the interpretation is ambiguous. You could say, well, maybe this is New York City skyline, and that this obelisk, or New York City skyline during the World's Fair in 1939, when this obelisk would have been Trilon and this dome would have been Perisphere, uh, two buildings at the fair. Um, what interpretation you decide to accept depends partly on elements that the Better Call Saul team introduces. Trilon was a, a particularly narrow needle uh, and it was built right next to Perisphere which is built next to a reflecting pond. So from a distance, Perisphere seemed to be floating on water. These images have haunted the modern imagination since 1939, and they uh, re reappear in the 1967 television series, The Prisoner, uh, where the sphere is now Rover, who patrols the perimeter of the village and is usually seen in an aquatic context. Trilon is mentioned in the lyrics of Lydia the Tattooed Lady, Todd's ringtone, and Kim Wexler wears uh, little Trilon earrings. <clears throat> in 2009, AMC did a remake of the Prisoner television series. This remake is a stylistic missing link between Breaking Bad and Better Call Saul. For number six's residents, the prisoner team uses glass block windows, probably borrowing straight from Breaking Bad. But they also add in their own elements, uh, the business with the uh, upward opening light fixtures, for example and also with parallel beams in the ceiling. The team of Better Call Saul liked what they saw so much, they incorporated it directly into their own television series. On the north wall of the uh, bingo hall, we see a, a mural of triangles. To a Shriner, the interpretation is simple. These are pyramids. Uh, but to the Better Call Saul team, the interpretation is no, they are the 2009 village. And the introduced element that, that sort of shifts the interpretation of the murals is the bingo ball dispenser. Now, if you read, um, if you read the YouTube, or if you listen to the YouTube videos describing how to build one of these things, they stress that you can build it in any kind of shape that you really want. You can design any shape. 
the Better Call Saul team has decided to use a, a sphere with an exit up the top and a slant down, down the side, which is exactly the same kind of shape as the penny farthing, the symbol of the prisoner in 1967. And so uh, parallel beams in the ceiling were uh, unusual in Breaking Bad, at least at, at the start. They become more common later towards the end of the series. But by the time you get to Better Call Saul, there are parallel beams in the ceiling just, just everywhere. Everywhere you look, you see it. Monkeys and gorillas indicate heavy-handed manipulation. Uh, I had mentioned Curious George, um, but anytime you see a monkey or gorilla, uh, somebody is being played. Cartesian grids are occasionally flashed as props or costume pieces, but only in the context of a question. Uh, the most common use is uh, with Mike's crossword puzzle. Uh, always in the context of a question. My favorite use is with the, the stripper party with Skinny Pete, Combo, and Jesse. When, uh, because it, the strippers have marvelous symbolic pasties and, and things. Um, but when the, um, when this stripper appears with her triangular uh, bikini top with the Cartesian grid, the first thing that she does is to ask a question. Five pointed stars indicate ego. I particularly like how they put the big star on the floor of the Berlino County Annex when Jimmy and Aaron are having their clash of egos. Earth art is an increasing influence in these television series. When Mike meets Nacho at the rail yards, the um, uh, chain link fence is removed, leaving only the poles. Uh, that's to honor Walter de Maria's The Lightning Field in western New Mexico. The symbol of Sandpiper Crossing is a vague spiral. That's to honor uh, Spiral Jetty, an artwork on the shore of the Great Salt Lake in Utah. Robert Smithson wanted to represent the process of entropy, how life unwinds at the end. And that's a perfect symbol for uh, uh, Sandpiper Crossing. <clears throat> so we had poles and we had spirals. We have a, 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 a spirals of poles. There was, uh, for a brief time, there was an artwork in residence here at Albuquerque's Balloon Museum, a, a double spiral of poles. And so in Better Call Saul, you see poles of spirals, um, uh, rolled carpets at Rabies Carpet Warehouse, where Jimmy tries to sell his his television time. So in conclusion, uh, good filming locations are those that are symbolically rich. Here at Cottonwood Mall, we have the clear story windows, a star in the ceiling, uh, two gentle arches, and uh, a Cartesian grid. <clears throat> and in the conference room at HHM, we have the parallel beams of the Latia ceiling. We have plate glass windows. We have a gentle arch. We have an all seeing eye. We have round arches on the table. And uh, at the end of, um, at, in the episode Lantern, at the end of ep um, season three, for the first time, the Better Call Saul team removed most of the uh, objects on the conference room table. Usually you can't get a good look at the wood inlay of the table uh, because of the presence of these objects. But as Howard leads Chuck out to the lobby to announce his resignation to the HHM staff, we get a good look at the wood inlay and it forms the shape of a double mace. And so that's my presentation. Are there any questions or comments?